Hello everybody, it's me Julian, and today I would like to talk about what is arguably Slavoj Žižek's most well-known, or perhaps most important, concept, which is the sublime object of ideology. And Slavoj Žižek actually gives a pretty straightforward definition of this concept in his book, The Parallax View, where he writes, the sublime object of ideology is the objet petit a. It is the phantasmatic frame which supports every ideological proposition. And yet that statement doesn't necessarily explain it, at least if you're not already familiar with philosophical and psychoanalytic concepts. And so the goal of this video is try to explain the concept of the sublime object of ideology in easy and accessible terms. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will have understood why this is an important concept for Zizek. Now I'll give you a very brief explanation of what Zizek means by ideology, which is a helpful starting point. Zizek doesn't employ the term ideology in the way a political scientist might. In other words, he doesn't mean it in terms of a political ideology, a doctrine or a point of view. Instead for Zizek, ideology is all around us, all the time. It's the way in which we make sense of the world and of ourselves. It's the incentive structures that underlie the things that we do in our life and why we think they're important. And for Zizek, the fundamental beginning of every critique of ideology is therefore to put on the supposed sunglasses of ideology, which allow us to see, almost through x-ray vision, the underlying imperatives of social life. And the movie that Zizek uses as an example of this is John Carpenter's They Live, where in which at a certain point, a character puts on sunglasses that allow him to see the underlying social imperatives or incentive structures that seep into the social order as supposedly natural. For example, he looks at a billboard and the billboard says, you must buy this or obey, you must want this. And Slavoj Žižek points out that to put on these ideological glasses is therefore to understand that ideology is never something that is imposed upon you directly by means of force but something which you experience as your own idea, as your own incentive, as your own desire, as it were. Therefore, it's important to begin with the idea that Slavoj Žižek combines the Marxist critique of ideology with, if you will, a Lacanian psychoanalytic interpretation of desire. Žižek argues that ideology is that which gives structure to the chaos of our desires, which is to say, it tells us not what to desire, but how to desire. And therefore, it gives us a framework of reference by which we understand ourselves and how we participate in social life. Now, with that knowledge, we can go back to the idea of the sublime object of ideology. Lacan argues that the sublime object is an ordinary object elevated to the level of the thing. For example, in religious worship, you could take the, I don't know, finger bone of a saint, which is an ordinary material object, but it becomes elevated to the level of the thing, something which is an object of worship, which represents something more than the object as such. You could also say that the same is true for memorabilia. If you own a um, guitar that was played by Elvis Presley, it's not just a guitar. It's a sublime object that represents Elvis. This is why the sublime object is always related to the idea of the fetish object. The fetish object, in strict terms, is the object which appears to return the gaze of the subject. In other words, when you look at Elvis's guitar, it feels like Elvis is talking to you through his guitar, like his presence is there in material form. The sublime object is therefore the object elevated to the level of the thing. And so the sublime object of ideology is the seemingly ordinary object of social life, which nevertheless signifies something much more. For example, if you buy a car, it's not just about the car, it's about what brand of car you're driving. This signifies social status to people around you and it also signifies that you are an educated consumer, 
In other words, that you know what kind of car you want because you know what kind of person you are. Therefore, the sublime object gives you a reference point, a system, a framework as to how you represent yourself as a subject or an individual to others in society. It therefore facilitates the creation and curation of the self in the symbolic order. Therefore, we can now go another layer deeper. When Slavoj Žižek says that the sublime object of ideology is that which gives phantasmatic support to ideological propositions, we can see that what therefore appear to be our own desires are in fact the manner in which the incentive structures and the desires of the machine, of the system, of capitalism, are themselves reproduced. Which is to say, this is essentially a Marxist argument. Marx argues that in capitalism, the reproduction of subjectivity, which is experienced as the ultimate form of enlightenment and liberation, is in fact the reproductions of the structural conditions required for the reproduction of capitalism itself. Therefore, capitalism recreates itself in our own guise, as it were. Therefore, the sublime object of capitalism is nothing more and nothing less than the idea of the commodity. Which means that buried into Slavoj Žižek's argument about the sublime object of ideology is also a Marxist critique of the commodity fetish. And the commodity fetish for Marx is the process by which an ordinary object appears to be imbued with magical qualities. Not just the magical qualities of branding, by which, for example, a shirt with a Nike logo on it is more expensive than a shirt with another logo on it, but specifically how as an object of exchange, it therefore creates and recreates the formal relations of social exchange upon which the value of the object is originally based. And this means that the commodity, namely the abstraction and the value derived from the abstraction of the commodity, not the actual material object, but the value which is therefore abstracted through the negation, which is the trade of the objects amongst other things, is the sublime object, or as Lacan puts it, the object elevated to the level of the thing. Now that you know all that, you can actually go back to Zizek's original statement, which is that the sublime object is also the objet petit a. For Lacan, the objet petit a is not the object of desire, but the object cause of desire. In other words, it's not the thing you want. It's the structure by which desire itself is created, represented in material form. Which is to say that Zizek says that the objet a is the sublime object, is the commodity form, is therefore the truth of ideology, the phantasmatic support frame by which I, all ideological positions are supported. Let me give you an example that's less abstract. When you're doing something in your daily life, you're likely to ask yourself, is this productive? And yet, the very mechanism by which you would justify an action to yourself as being productive is already overdetermined in advance by capitalist incentive structures telling you that you have to invest your, times, your time in a productive way. Which means that the manner in which you engage in otherwise ordinary activities is already seen through the lens of the idea that your time is something which has to be invested, which therefore has to be invested in a good or negative way. Wasting time, therefore, becomes the ultimate sin within the incentive structures of a bourgeois capitalist economy. This means that the difficulty to simply do nothing, to simply relax and allow yourself to do nothing, is already an ideological outcome of this incentive structure or phantasmatic support frame. Therefore, in order to truly liberate yourself as an individual, you have to be able to choose your own phantasmatic support rather than accept the one that is given to you and which you experience as your own or as natural. Revolution for Zizek, therefore, becomes a psychoanalytic revolution. It becomes the process by which the subject emancipates himself from the preordained phantasmatic frames of the capitalist incentive structure, which he or she experiences as being her own desires. The central question, therefore, is 
Where is your desire coming from? If desire is structurally constitutive to subjectivity, then this means that taking control of your own desires is the primary act of all liberation. Hence why Slavoj Žižek argues, using the, um, uh, the motif of Bartleby, namely, I would prefer not to, Žižek argues that I prefer not to becomes the primary ethical gesture of self-liberation in a capitalist economy, which is to say, I would prefer not to follow your incentive structures, your phantasmatic support frame telling me how to desire. And therefore, I would prefer not to becomes an affirmation as to the possibility of imagining a new desire, a new way to live, a new life, a new self. That is Slavoj Žižek's concept of the sublime object of ideology, which he defines as the objet a, which gives us the phantasmatic support frame that underlies every ideological proposition. Thank you so much for watching. And you can, of course, join my lectures for free here on YouTube, or you can download them on Patreon, as well as my recurring ebook subscription. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that was useful. I will see you tomorrow.